can you see my slide? Yes, miss. Okay. So uh, this slide actually show you uh, there's a difference between the bit error rate as well as a simple error rate. All right. So when we are using binary um, modulation techniques, that means uh, two PSK, two FSK, or two ASK, uh, the bit error rate is the same as a simple error rate. All right. However, when you are using uh, binary modulation scheme meaning you are using 4 PSK or 8 PSK and so on, uh, each signal element actually uh, carry multiple bits. All right. So this multiple bit actually form one symbol. Yeah. So example here, uh, 4 NERI, each symbol carry two bits. Right. And in 8 NERI, each symbol actually carries three bits. Yeah. So when will the symbol occur? A symbol occur whenever there is a bit error or more bits error. So let's say for example here, I, in this example, uh, I have a uh, 4 PSK, all right, 4 PSK. From this constellation diagram, uh, you should be able to work out that this is a 4 PSK. And where symbol one, symbol one is actually carrying binary information 0, 0, all right. And uh, symbol two is carrying binary information zero one. Symbol three carrying binary information one one. And symbol four is carrying binary information one zero. Okay. And what happens if there is a bit error in symbol one? Okay. Bit error in symbol one that means um the decoder or the receiver uh will wrongly interpret uh, the symbol one instead of zero zero let's say it interpret wrongly it thought this the one zero okay so that means the first bit is in error so when the first bit is wrong then um the receiver will actually thought this is symbol four all right or if the second bit is interpreted wrongly then it becomes zero one isn't it? so when it becomes zero one so the receiver method, uh, this is symbol two instead of symbol one. Yeah. So even though there's only one bit error, uh, you actually cause uh, an error in the symbol. And if you have two bit error, so two bit error meaning both bits are wrong. Both bits are interpreted wrongly. Then zero, zero become one, one. Then uh, the receiver will think that this is uh, symbol three instead of symbol one. All right. So, uh, be it one bit error or two bit errors in this case, it actually cause a symbol error. All right. Okay. Uh, however, it's quite unlikely to have more than one bit error when a symbol error occurs. All right. Normally, a symbol error is caused by only one bit error, but not two bit. It's quite rare to have two bit, uh, wrongly interpreted uh, at the same time. Um. So as far as the um, numbers is concerned, yeah, a symbol error is not always larger than a bit error. All right, even though they're talking about the same thing here. So in this case, all right, in this case, uh, I have um, 20 bits to be transmitted. All right, and then uh, I use uh, one symbol to carry two bits, and therefore uh, within this 20 bits, I actually use 10 symbols. Yeah, so I transmit 10 symbols. And now uh, here, what happens if I have one error in this 20 bits? So for this example here, um, instead of uh, getting, um, I send one zero here in this second symbol, but the receiver actually interpret as one one. All right, so meaning there's a one bit error here. So if you calculate the uh, error rate, Right. Uh, as far as uh, bit error is concerned, uh, your bit error is one bit is wrong out of twenty bits then, or twenty bit received. Yeah. And whereas for symbol error, because you only ten send ten symbols, so and with one error in the symbols, so the symbol error rate now is one out of ten. All right. So one out of ten will give you what zero point one, isn't it? Yeah. And then bit error one out of twenty will give you zero point zero five. So this is a typical example where your symbol error is uh, error rate is larger than the uh, bit error rate. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, if you are using a binary, then the symbol error rate is same as bit error rate because one symbol is carrying one bit only. Right? So in general, uh, the, the probability of symbol uh, error is actually larger than the probability for bit error. Yeah, because we are going to compare the same uh, set of data that we send or we receive. So you end up, the probability of symbol error is higher than the probability of bit error. Okay. And what this tells us is the symbol error rate is going to be larger or equals to the bit error rate. Yeah, it's equal to when you are using uh, m equals to two. All right. For for m greater than two, uh, that definitely your symbol error rate will be larger than your bit error rate. Okay. So this one actually. Uh, describe how we are going to compare the various modulation schemes uh, here. So because the channel bandwidth, all right, we talk about this uh, since chapter one, the channel bandwidth and the transmission power are the two primary uh, communication system resources uh, that uh, have to be used as efficiently as possible, all right, because they are limited, bandwidth is always limited, power is always limited as well. So we have to make full use of these uh, two resources. Yeah. So um, there are two efficiency that we need to measure. The first one related to power all right, is the power utilization efficiency, or some book call it energy efficiency. Okay. It's measured by the required uh, signal power or signal to noise ratio. Uh, in order to achieve a certain bit error probability. All right, we want to achieve a certain bit error probability. So which one actually need the least power? Yeah, which modulation scheme require the least power? This is the one we look for. Yeah. And then the next one, which is called bandwidth efficiency or spectrum utilization efficiency, uh, is a measure of uh, the data rate per unit bandwidth. All right. So given one one you one hertz bandwidth, how much data can we send in that one hertz bandwidth? Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, we always want to send more. All right. Given one hertz, we want to send more bits. So we want to maximize our bandwidth efficiency. Uh, at the minimum require uh, a over sigma signal to noise ratio. And what it means is uh, minimum power. Minimum power is always desired, and also uh, maximum bandwidth efficiency is always required. Yeah. So again, uh, we try to balance these two. Uh, and you later you're gonna see is is uh is not you are not able to have both uh, at the same time. Right. So this slide we're gonna compare the two types of uh, digital modulation schemes. The first one here on the left hand side is the MFSK and the one on the right hand side is the MPSK. All right. And uh, this graph, this is a graph of the bit error probability versus the signal to noise ratio. Okay, so basically signal power, assuming that the noise is constant, then we look at the signal power over here on the uh, x axis. Right now, let's take a look at this graph. Okay, um, this each of this graph, all right, represent the probability of bit error, probability of bit error for different level of m. All right, so how is m related to n? In this here, I give you n. All right, but uh, we're talking about m here. So n is related to m by this equation. M is two to the power of n. All right, so with the n equals to one here, that means my m is two here. All right, so here n is two, that means my m is four here. All right, this is related to this if we want, and three meaning my m is eight. All right, so let's interpret this graph. So there are two things, two information we can get from here actually. The first one is by looking at the same probability of error. Let's say I want uh, I want all modulation scheme to give me the same probability of error. Yeah. So what is the signal power required, or what is the uh, signal to noise ratio required over here? 
Now, if you look at the first graph here at this point, all right, to, to achieve this signal uh, probability of error, my signal to noise ratio need to be this value. 10, this one maybe 12. All right, this is for m equals to 2. m is 2. All right, and then when m is 4, which is this graph over here, I need my signal to noise ratio this value. So this value, let's say I estimate to be 9. This is for m equals to 4. All right. And then the next graph, to achieve the same probability uh, of er bit error, uh, if I use m equals to 8, which is this one here, my signal to noise ratio required is somewhere here. All right. Maybe it's about 8. Yeah. Okay. So from this graph, all right, we can make one deduction. That is for if you want to fix, to achieve a fixed probability of error, as you increase your M, okay, what is the required uh, A over sigma? When I increase my M, you can see that this is when my M increasing. As I move along from the outer graph to the, the graph on the right hand side to the graph on the inner side, this is when I increase my M. And what is the what happened to the required signal to noise ratio? A over sigma actually reduced, isn't it? Yeah. So meaning in MMSK and FSK, all right, if you increase your M, you actually need less signal power, all right, in order to achieve the same probability of error, a bit error over here. Yes. Yeah? Now let's Take a look at the PSK then. Yeah, for PSK, the first graph on the left hand side is n equals to uh, n equals to one or two, so this correspond to m equals to two or four. All right, and then the second graph here is n equals to three, so this is for m equals to eight, and this is for m equals to sixteen and so on. Yeah. Now again, let's. Let's uh, refer again to one probability of error over here. So to achieve the same probability of uh, error, if you use n equals to 2 and 4, all right, the signal to noise ratio required is this, about 9. Yeah. When you use m equals to 8, then this is the point is the intersection is here. So you need a A over sigma of about 12 dB. All right. If you increase your M to 16, is this point, then you need an A over sigma of uh, 15, 17, maybe this is um, about 16.5 or 17, something like that. All right. Then uh, again, this is for m equals to 2 and 4. This is for m equals to 8. This is for m equals to 16. So that means in this direction, you are increasing your m. Yeah. So that means for mpsk, for a fixed probability of error, as you increase your m, what happened to your a over sigma requirement? When you increase your n, basically you require more, isn't it? You require more uh, signal to noise ratio, meaning you require higher signal power. Yeah. So therefore, in terms of uh, power efficiency or energy efficiency, uh, which one is better? Okay, MFSK is better, isn't it? Because when we increase my m. I need less power. All right, you I, the requirement for power is lower when I increase my m in order to achieve the same probability of error. All right, but for MPSK, when I increase my m, I need more power in order to maintain the same probability of error. Okay, so that is for energy efficiency. Um, 
Another way to interpret this graph is, all right, if, if I have a limitation on my power, all right, if I have a limitation on my power, so um, how would it affect, how would it affect the probability of error performance if I increase my M? All right, how would it affect the probability of error if I increase my M? So you can, again, to, to know this, we can always make use of one, um, one value for your A over sigma. So let's take this one for example. All right, take this one for example. So let's say if uh, I have limitation on my signal to noise ratio, my signal to noise ratio can only have, uh, let's say about eight over here. So if I use M equals to eight, okay, you now this is for M equals to eight, right? Yeah, M equals to eight. Okay, I have a probability error of this. But if I increase my M, all right, um, increase, reduce my M, look at this one over here, the next graph, if I use M equals to, this one is for M equals to 4, isn't it? All right, M equals to 4, this is the probability of error I get. And if I use M equals to 2, oops, if I draw a straight line up, Right, then the probability of error that I get from m equals to 2 is this. All right, so for MLSK, we can make another deduction, which is if you have a limited patient in your power, if you have fixed A over sigma, all right, as you increase your m, uh, what happened to your probability of error? As I increase my M from 2 to 4 to 8, you can see my probability of error actually drop, isn't it? Yeah, my probability of error actually drop. So this is a good sign, isn't it? When I increase my M, I actually reduce the probability of error, which means less error being made. Yeah. And uh, as for PSK, yeah, for PSK, again, uh, if you, let's say I take, I take this one for reference. Yeah, this is when m equals to m equals to two or four, I get my probability of error this. And let's say I have a limitation here, my a over sigma can only be this value. Okay, the maximum I get is this. And then if I use m equals to eight, right, it draw the line up. All right, m equals to eight, I get this probability of error. Yeah, and if I increase my M to 16, all right, then I get this probability of error. So for M PSK, if I actually fix my A over sigma, I have a limitation on the signal power. All right, so as I increase my M, all right, what happened? As I increase my M, what happened? My probability of error will increase. All right, my probability of error will increase. So this is not a good sign, isn't it? Because probability of error increasing means what? You're going to receive uh, your data with a lot of errors. <laughs> okay. So you can see the as far as uh, MPSK is concerned, um, when you fix your signal to noise ratio or you fix, you have a limitation on your signal power, then when you increase your M, all right, when you increase your M, you actually end up with a higher error rate. Yeah, higher error rate over here. Okay, do you understand this? You have to make the same uh, interpretation in your assignment later on, yeah? Because in your assignment, you need to choose the best modulation scheme for that application. And uh, the best modulation scheme means that uh, you have to compare in terms of uh, energy efficiency, in terms of bandwidth. I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about bandwidth later on. Yeah, we need to talk about uh, discuss in terms of your energy efficiency as well as bandwidth efficiency with reference to the probability of error for your system. All right. 
of course, uh, we want uh, the probability error to be as low as possible. Yeah, um, but again, it won't be zero la, because uh, there is always a limitation in your system design. So you need to discuss, okay, and uh, come up with the best modulation scheme. Okay. Then um, let's move on to the next one. So the next I actually uh, explain uh, what I've just uh, described just now in the previous uh, slide. So in terms of uh, energy efficiency, all right, uh, MFSK is always uh, more efficient than MPFK. All right, because as you increase your M, you, you need less, less energy, okay, or less signal power. Right, so let's talk about bandwidth. So in the bandwidth discussion, I'm going to omit uh, ASK because ASK uh, is, uh, is actually seldom used in wireless uh, digital communication system. It's normally used in uh, optical fiber, which is the uh, wired. All right. So I'm going to compare um, the bandwidth for MPSK, MQAN, and uh, MFSK. All right, um, the equation to find the bandwidth for uh, MPSK and MQAM are the same. All right, uh, which is this one. It's actually proportional to our symbol rate. All right, and what is R? Again, R is uh, the row of factor in our power shaping filter. Okay, R is, uh, can, be, can take a value between zero and one. Yeah? And uh, what is symbol rate? Symbol rate is actually bit rate uh, divided by n. All right. Symbol rate is bit rate divided by n. Um, and then uh, what is n? n is the number of bits in one symbol. All right. How many bits is carried by one symbol? And uh, n is related to m is by this equation. Uh, n equals to log 2m. All right. Or 2 to the power of uh, n equals to m right uh, okay so if you were to express in terms of bit rate all right so the bandwidth uh, for mpsk and mqam is actually given by this equation over here one plus r rb over n all right so if you actually compare this to the baseband uh, bandwidth which is uh, one plus r rb over two uh, this is actually happen when uh, n equals to one, right? Yeah. So again, uh, you can see that when we perform modulation, all right, modulation meaning we use a carrier to carry our binary data, uh, we actually double the bandwidth requirement. All right. Um, so again, similar concept with the double sideband uh, suppressed carrier. Uh, yeah. Whenever you multiply your signal with the carrier, you double the bandwidth of the modulated signal. Okay, and uh, bandwidth efficiency. Uh, by definition, bandwidth efficiency is defined as the uh, number of bits that can be transmitted with one hertz. So bandwidth efficiency is RB over B. Okay, bit rate over one, uh, bit rate over the bandwidth. So if I were to rearrange this equation, so that will give me uh, efficiency equals to n over one plus r. Okay, so the unit for efficiency is bit per second per hertz. Yeah, bits per second per hertz. Or if you want to express it in m, then that will be log two m over one plus r. Yeah, and uh, if you are using a a full row of raised cosine filter, that means when the r is equal to one then the efficiency of uh, MPSK and MQAM is given by uh, half of log 2M or half of N. All right, so that is the, that simplify your equation a lot. But uh, what you need to, what you need to remember is this equation, uh, N is universal, so, all right. Now let's take a look at an example here. So in this example, we have an available bandwidth of uh, 100 kilohertz, uh, spans from 200k to 300k, 
So uh, what are the carrier frequency and the bit rate? If we modulated our data using BPSK with R equals to one. All right. So what is our carrier frequency? Um, our bandwidth is on 200k to 300k. Okay. The carrier frequency because whenever we use a, a carrier to carry our um, digital information, the bandwidth requirement is always two times. All right. So therefore, uh, your carrier needs to be in the middle all right so your carrier frequency needs to be in the middle uh, which is at uh, 250 kilohertz yeah um, so now for bpsk bpsk you need to recognize that b stands for uh, binary psk so in this case your n is equal to one all right and your m is equal to two or sometimes we call it two psk uh, yeah um, therefore using the, uh, the equation that I've just given you just now. All right, so that will be um, here r equals to 1, isn't it? So this is r equals to 1 and then you change to, we need to find what bit rate, right? It is rb over here. We need to find rb. So rearrange the equation will require, will actually give you rb equals to uh, 50 kilobits per second. All right, your bit rate will be 50 kilobits per second with a bandwidth of uh, 100 kilohertz okay so next one uh, recalculate the bit rate if a uh, qpsk modulation scheme is used instead all right so to answer this question you need to recognize that this qpsk is actually equals to 4 psk all right equivalent to 4 psk that means your m is 4 so with the m being 4 your n is 2 all right, so substituting the uh, n equals to 2 into this equation. All right, then you get your Rb is equal to 100 kilobits per second. Okay, so this exercise actually show us uh, effect on the bandwidth uh, requirement or the bandwidth efficiency. So you can see they're using the same bandwidth. All right, with the same bandwidth given, if I transmit my signal using BPSK, all right, this is for BPSK. Let me change the color. All right, this is for BPSK, meaning uh, two PSK, and this one is for four PSK. All right, so you can. See uh, if I actually use compare uh, BPSK to QPSK with the same bandwidth, I can transmit more bits using QPSK, right? With the same bandwidth, and then also um, um, what else? With the same bandwidth, I can transmit two times the bit rate of a BPSK. Yeah, and then if you refer, if you refer back to here. For MPSK, M equals to 2, M equals to 4 will give me the same probability of error. All right, uh, over the same um, signal to noise ratio. All right, so the bit error rate curve for M equals to 2 and M equals to 4 PSK is the same. All right, so meaning when you have a choice between BPSK and QPSK, all right. Which one is which one should you choose? QPSK, isn't it? Because it, it allows you to transmit more bits. Alright. With the same power, with the same power for a fixed um, probability of error. Alright, QPSK will give you uh, to allow you to transmit more bits as compared to BPSK. Alright. Okay, yeah, um, but again, that depends on your application. Uh, but sometimes if your application do not require such a high bit rate, um, then maybe BPSK will do. Yeah, why BPSK will do as compared to QPSK? You can discuss again in the complexity of your uh, circuits. All right, 
the BPSK uh, modulator and demodulator is easier to design as compared to QPSK, is it? Or is it not? You have to refer again to chapter 7a yeah, for your discussion. So sometimes for certain application where the um, bit rate, uh, the BPSK can already give you the bit rate uh, that your system produced, then maybe BPSK is a better choice as compared to QPSK. Right, because the circuit is actually simpler and cheaper as well. So again, you need to put all you need to consider all these factors in your discussion uh, before you actually uh, conclude uh, which modulation scheme and the modulation scheme is the best. Okay, uh, then we talk about the bandwidth for MFSK. So for FSK, uh, the bandwidth uh, required to transmit uh, MFSK signal for coherent detection. Um, for PSK and QAM, uh, it's only coherent detection. Yeah? You cannot use non-coherent detection unless you're talking about DPSK, All right, the differential PSK. Um, but for FSK, um, the bandwidth required um, actually depend on uh, the detection method. All right. You use coherent detection, then the bandwidth required is given by this equation over here. All right. So you can see uh, as m increases and we increase our m, all right, the bandwidth required also increase. Yeah, which is logical. Uh, yeah? If you have done your experiment two, all right, and then if you actually measure your bandwidth, you can actually see that the bandwidth, uh, I asked you to do two FSK, four FSK, and eight FSK, right? So you can see that 8 FSK bandwidth is actually much wider as compared to 4 FSK and which is also 4 FSK which is also the bandwidth is wider than 2 FSK All right, and you should see that in your experiment too. Okay so that gives uh, the bandwidth efficiency for the um, MFSK to be uh, given by this equation which is 2 log M over M plus 3. Yeah. Again, as usual, the unit of measurement for bandwidth efficiency is bit per second per hertz. And for coherent, de uh, non-coherent detection of, of MFSK signal, the um, bandwidth efficiency is given as uh, log 2m over 2m. All right, log 2m over 2m. All right, so that gives us, if you rearrange, then you get your bandwidth. Huh? So what is the bandwidth here? You rearrange your equation. B actually equals 2M RB over log 2M. All right, so you can see now the uh, requirement for bandwidth for non-coherent non detection is actually wider. All right, as compared to coherent detection. Hey, but uh, both equations show similar trend. That is the bandwidth efficiency drop as you increase your M. Right? Just now we talk about uh, for MFSK, if we increase our M, we lose less power, right? Less signal power, correct? MFSK, we increase our M, we actually need less power right for fixed probability or error all right but now you can see as you increase your m in order to get more energy efficiency because it needs less energy here but problem is your bandwidth is going to increase okay so you are actually uh, trading the bandwidth uh, for power in this case over here yeah. Again, this is something you need to discuss. Huh? All right. So this slide here actually show you the bandwidth comparison between the MPSK and MFSK. All right. So here I use R equals to one. Okay. To be fair uh, across the board. So now with uh the first row, the first row is for different M level. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. And then the second row, number on the second row is the bandwidth efficiency for MFPSK and MQAM. All right. 
So we can see that when m is equal to 2, the bandwidth efficiency rho is 0 0.5. But when I increase my m to 4, my bandwidth efficiency improved to 1. All right. And when I increase my m to 8, the efficiency increased to 1.5 and so on. All right. So you can see that for um, as far as the m PSK is concerned, when I increase my m, I increase my efficiency. All right, bandwidth efficiency. Okay, and let's let's recall what happened just now when we increase my our m. What happened to the energy? When we increase our m, what happened to the energy requirement? Which is rho. When I increase my efficiency m, what happened to my energy requirement? I need to increase my signal power, right? In order to achieve the same probability of error. So that means uh, as far as uh, m PSK is concerned, if you want uh, more bandwidth efficiency, you increase your m. But as you increase your m, you re must remember you need to increase your signal power in order to maintain the same probability of error. All right. So again, this is a trade-off between your power uh, as well as the bandwidth efficiency. Okay. All right. Then uh, uh, the next row here is the bandwidth efficiency for uh, MFSK with coherent detection. All right, so again, you can see the trend uh, as we increase uh, M, the bandwidth efficiency drop. All right, as we increase our M, our bandwidth efficiency drop. All right, and then for same thing for the non-coherent detection. All right, you increase your M, the bandwidth efficiency also drop. Yeah. And overall, if you compare the coherent detection with non-coherent detection uh, for MFSK, the bandwidth efficiency for uh, non-coherent uh, MFSK is lower, isn't it? Lower than the bandwidth efficiency for coherent MFSK. Okay, yeah, for the same M level uh, here, when M equals to two is 0 0.4 but for coherent but for non-coherent is only 0 0.25 okay um so this this slide actually give a very good comparison in terms of uh, bandwidth efficiency between uh, different m psk and mfsk all right, so as we discussed previously, there is always a trade-off, yeah? So in your system design, you must be aware uh, of the trade-off. So from what we have just discussed, actually it depends on uh, which one should you aim for, all right? So if your system is power limited, all right, that means your power, you, you have a, a limitation on how much power you can transmit your signal or uh, let's say your system is actually running on battery, using battery, so you cannot boost, you cannot actually simply increase increase your power, right? So therefore, uh, again, if you have limitation on your power, and uh, then you might want to choose a modulation scheme that uh, give you better bandwidth efficiency, All right? And it is also uh, possible that your, your system is bandwidth limited, all right, where you have a limitation on how much bandwidth you can use, yeah, but then uh, power, there's no limit. Maybe it's power from the main, so no limit, yeah. So in this case, you can actually choose a system that is more um, bandwidth efficient, but less power efficient, yeah. So again, it depends on the requirement as well as on the application. So in order to see the ultimate uh, power bandwidth trade-off, uh, basically we need to use uh, Shannon's uh, channel capacity theorem. Uh. So this is actually to be covered in the uh, next chapter. All right, so um, 
Okay, so I list down in these slides here uh, various consideration uh, in choosing the right modulation scheme. All right, of course, we want everything to be the best, uh, and then you need to juggle the trade off. No? All right, so now uh, you need to have high spectral efficiency. High spectral efficiency refer to the bandwidth efficiency. Okay, we want uh, to transmit as many bits as possible uh, given the same bandwidth, right? And then the next one, uh, high power efficiency. That means uh, a scheme that require the least power okay, in order to achieve the say a uh, uh, certain probability of error, all right? And then it need to be robust to multipath effect. Okay, I did not talk about multipath here uh, in this course. Actually, multipath means uh, when I transmit a signal from one place to another, okay, the the signal actually can take several paths not just one straight line all right uh, so again uh, this the receiver actually will receive the uh, same signal that come from different uh, parts all right so again uh, this will cause the effect uh, on the receiver in order to recognize you know which is the the actual signal received um so a uh, good modulation scheme should be robust to this all right and uh, also low cost yeah, I talked about BPSK and QPSK just now. All right, uh, the QPSK and BPSK, which one is a lower cost? Okay, which one is easier to implement? Yeah, and then um, the, third, uh, the next one is about low carrier to co-channel interference ratio. Of course, uh, in, in the same channel, we ha may have multiple carriers, right? So, um, of course, we want uh, as little interference from the other carrier as possible. Yeah. And so our band radiation, so meaning we shouldn't have uh, any signal we transmitted out of the um, bandwidth that we are given. All right. So we don't lose power unnecessarily. Um, then the, na the next one on the list is a constant or near constant envelope. All right, so if you are using PSK and FSK, you will see that the envelope, uh, the, the, right, the amplitude of the carrier is always constant, isn't it? So, so that we can, the system at the receiver just need to work out the phase angle or the frequency. Yeah? And um, it may not be constant if you are using QAM techniques. Yeah? Because QAM, uh, you will have a combination of phase and amplitude as well. Yeah? So again, it depends on your modulation scheme. Um, so the practical application, uh, as far as uh, the digital modulation technique is concerned, all right, here, uh, here's the list. So for BPSK, um, this is normally used in a local area network, all right, and uh, the standards that you should refer to is IEEE 80.11, all right. Uh, B is a very, uh, the, the one of the very few uh, first few standards uh, uh, published, but now uh, if you actually look up uh, for IEEE 802.11 standards, uh, there are many more. All right, they are um, started with A, then go to B, then go to then G, N. Uh, well, you need to find out uh, and which one is the latest uh, standards. And QPSK, QPSK is also uh, to be used uh, according to the IEEE standards here. Um, BPSK is for one megabit per second. Yeah, for QPSK, QPSK, remember it has a better bandwidth efficiency. We can transmit more bits with the same bandwidth. So you expect the QPSK is for higher bit rate transmission, all right, as compared to BPSK. Yeah. And then QAM, QAM again uh, give you even more uh, better bandwidth efficiency. So you can actually refer to these standards here. All right, so we actually go to uh, 16 QAM, uh, 36 QAM, uh, um, 16 QAM for higher bit rate now. You can see you can go up to 24 megabits per second. Yeah. Um, as compared to QPSK, can only give support up to one megabit per second. Yeah, and um, FSK is commonly used in uh, 
color stone or paging system. All right. So uh, as far as your assignment is concerned, all right, you you need to refer to IEEE 802.11 standards. All right. So make sure the system that you design uh, will follow this standard. So there are many many version of 802.11. All right, so you need to actually refer to them and see which one is applicable to your uh, design later on. Okay, um, yeah, so that end, that actually end chapter 7b. Uh, any questions before I end the class here? If you pay attention just now, I actually given you a lot of clues for your assignment already, even though you haven't got the question. <laughs> no question? Claire? No question. Oh, very good. So if no question, then um, well, we can end the class here, and I'll uh, see you again next time. Bye bye.